afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the closing session of uh, EcoBuild 2018. As you know, EcoBuild has had a theme of uh, how do we actually, how, does, how can the industry achieve the sustainable development goals, the Paris Agreement and uh, the Habitat goals as well. And uh, during the 12 sessions that we've, that have gone previous to this one, we've asked each chair to say which three things do you think uh, the, the, uh, are the key things that you would say the sector can do and what should the government do? And so today, I'm just going to introduce those to you. But I think I might go, oh no, they'll, they're there for you to look at while I introduce everyone. Uh, so we're going to hear from some great panelists uh, we have Baroness Young of Old School, uh, who is Chair of Trustees of the Woodland Trust, who's going to speak very much from someone outside of the sector. Then we have Davati Stranati, who's the Global Sustainability Lead of the Mott McDonald. And he's going to come from a sector point of view, but also thinking about the sustainability issues. Uh, Dr. Kayla Friedman from uh, the Cambridge Institute uh, for Sustainability Leadership uh, and she's the course director for uh, interdisciplinary design for the built environment. And then finally, Anne Bentley, who's going to, who's the lead on supply chain and business models for the Construction Leadership Council, and also global practice director for Ryder Levitt Bucknell. So, and then we want to hear from you uh, and have a little bit of a conversation with you about what you think are the key things that we, we need to come away from with, at this conference. So looking first at the built environment sector, we heard in uh, the first kickoff session uh, from uh, Paula Caballero. So she is the woman uh, behind the sustainable development goals. She wor worked for the Colombian government and works at Global Resources Inst World Resources Institute uh, these days. And she reminded us that we need to take action urgently. We all know we should remind ourselves that the built environment sector, uh, whatever we build today, is going to be here in 2030 when we have to have achieved all the goals, and certainly by 2050 when we need to achieve zero carbon the whole world over as part of our commitment on the Paris Agreement. So first of all, let's get started immediately if we're not already doing it because of this lock-in issue. Then secondly, the built environment has a massive impact on the natural environment. Because the sector is often building on land, it can make space for nature. And so goal 15, protecting natural capital, came out as a really important thing the sector can do. Thirdly, measuring and reporting and sharing data and standardizing data and learning. Um, I was listening to a colleague today talking about the built environment's performance gap in, in energy performance. It's 50% difference between design and build in some cases. So, you know, we've really got to do better there. Fourthly, we need to collaborate across the sector and cross-sector, and that's our Goal 17 partnerships for the goals. Fifthly, you probably can't quite see down there, ensure construction quality. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and sixthly, uh, enable behavior change. So let's make it easy for people to live a sustainable life in the buildings that we build uh, for them. Uh, and then what can the government do? Well, a, a key thing that came out, and indeed was the theme of, of that first session, was the UK government needs to have a plan on how we're actually going to achieve the goals. And uh, luckily, uh, the government is taking some time to get on board with that. And, and there was a recognition that the government sees this as an international development issue, and there's not enough recognition of how much we need to do at home in the UK to achieve the goals. And there is a need for cross, not just departmental plans, but cross-departmental collaboration and uh, a joined-up approach by government. Um, now, UK Stakeholders for Sustainable Development is a network which is producing, uh, in effect, some guidance for the government. Uh, and, you, and the work that we're doing here at EcoBuild will contribute to that. So um, all of this will feed into, into that national plan, but you yourself can get involved in UK stakeholders for sustainable development. Uh, and my colleague Emily, down here at the front, 
can uh, advise you on that or just Google it. Um, and that plan will be pulled together. Uh, there's something you can actually comment on with 17 organizations taking a lead, one for each of the goals. And over 140 organizations are actually scrutinizing that. And you can comment on it. And it will be presented. We heard on the first session Lord McConnell saying that this will be presented to the government uh, and will invite MPs to come along and hear about it in July. Fourthly, oh, sorry, secondly, uh, we need an Environment Act. It's not good enough to have a 25-year plan. We need an Environment Act with binding targets. Thirdly, uh, procurement needs to include social and environmental actions, so the government is a huge procurer of, of goods and services and, and could make sure that these things are included. We'd like, the conference would like the government to give local authorities more leeway, like in Barking and Dagenham, uh, to create homes, to create places, and take more of a lead. Fifthly, uh, placemaking and standards need to be incorporated for social and environmental outcomes into the 300,000 new homes a year that, that the government are talking about building. And finally, the government needs to take a lead uh, on energy and water because this is such a critical issue for us. If we don't have energy, if we don't have water, uh, if we're having flooding, these are, these are important things that the government needs to really get a, take a lead and get a grip on. So this is the wisdom of the first 12 sessions, and there's a lot more detail behind it, which will be pulled together into a plan. So when you get your EcoBuild emails, do have a look, uh, because there will be a document which Bioregional and the organizers are going to work on collating together so that um, you can get a more fuller, richer picture of that. And as I say, it will be put forward to the government as well. And we will revisit that uh, at next year's EcoBuild. So in this session today, we want you to help us to really build on that and see if we can even pro start to prioritize it a bit. And uh, the panel are going to share their thoughts from their perspectives uh, and their thoughts on this as well. So I'll just uh, hand over now to um, Baroness Young of Old Schoon, uh, who's going to give us the perspective, given her ex vast experience um, as a member of the House of Lords. Uh, Barbara was, uh, is, was Chief Executive of the Environment Agency from 2000 to 2008, was involved in the Care Quality Commission establishment, is a Chancellor of Cranfield University, and uh, was Chief Executive of Health Charity Diabetes UK. Uh, she was also a member of the House of Lords Select Committee on National Policy in the Built Environment in 2015 to 16, uh, which published its report, Building Better Places, in early 2016. And Barbara's here today very much as um, Chair of the Woodland Trust, but with that vast experience across all sectors, she's able to share with us her, her views on the Sustainable Development Goals and, and what it means for her. Thank you.